Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. So I started with network and then I mo and, uh, moved to uh, perimeter security. Before I moved to perimeter security, I was handling uh, network, uh, switching routing and um, load balancer uh, mm -hmm. and ASM. Uh, that's a web application mm -hmm. firewall and then uh, perimeter security multiple vendors and then from there I moved to cyber security where uh -huh. I have completed uh, my CHFI, uh, CEH and I uh, basically I'm handling a team so there are people uh, working this together. This conference too. will now be recorded. So manage the SOC and uh, responsible for uh, um, handling stuff regular uh, SOC uh, um, primary responsibilities mm -hmm. so you're looking in India or outside India I'm basically I'm in India okay so you're working in India where in Bangalore or Hyderabad where you're working Chennai 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 you're working okay okay that's yeah. fine okay so you are able to see my screen right yeah okay so let's start it so have you heard about the Splunk in the past or it's your first time you're hearing and just coming for the class? So do you have any Splunk uh, knowledge, prior knowledge or anything you know about the Splunk? I heard about uh, Splunk but uh, I don't have much about Splunk. Okay. Okay, so let me tell you what we're going to uh, cover for the two days as a demo session. So we're going to understand what the Splunk is there and what mm -hmm the power Splunk has what we can do through Splunk and as a Splunk a lot of other rival tools are there like Sumo, Hadoop, Spark, Tableau so these are the rival tools are there so why we are going to uh, why the Splunk is more preferred one as compared to the other tools so those comparison we're going to understand and as well as we're going to understand what all the Splunk products are there and the different components so that's what in a small okay. brief you're going to understand about the Splunk so that it will be easy and we are get to know about the different vocabularies and what we said the terminology what the Splunk has so it's easy for us for the further session when we are using that terminology so very easy to correlate the things okay yeah so yeah so this is the first one So this is a Splunk overview. So here we are going to understand uh, what is Splunk, why using the Splunk and in which previous team we can use the Splunk. So Splunk is basically a data analysis tool where we are pulling the data, saving the data and then we are doing the analysis on the top of that. So for example, it just take a small instance that like there are a lot of telecommunication companies are there, right? So each and every day you are a lot of issues, complaint is raised over the telecommunication company on the for the might be the network issue or billing issues are there or might be the issue with the access issue related issues are there so a lot of other issues are there maybe data access related issues are there security related issues are there so a lot of issues are there so lakhs and lakhs of ticket is raised each and every day for th these companies so it's very much difficult to understand uh, which is the high priority one or what type of critical what particular set of issues are there because there's a lot of set of tickets are there so in that case the Splunk into come into the picture where we are pulling the data into Splunk then we are writing uh, codes and trying to find that to the analysis on the top of that like we are trying to create a different visualizations like chart pie chart column chart bar chart a lot of other charts and visualization methods are there that we are going to use to try to find out what are the issues are there and on that basis we are going to segregate the set of data which is the high priority one which is the less priority one so these type of things we can use while using the Splunk apart from that let's say a lot of other way uh, domain where we can use the Splunk like the security related issues or might be in your HR point of view that like the uh, resource utilization point of view where you have lot of resources are there in your team and you want to analyze okay which particular resource have done how much ticket they have closed at what particular time stamp they have used so like we can make the whole analysis and come to know okay which particular resources are overutilized or underutilized and there is a what do you say clear picture about each and every resource so it's very much easy and to understand and tackle the whole team so this is the one of the other use cases where we can use the Splunk so likewise there is thousands of thousands of other other tools are there where using the Splunk you can name the wherever the data is there we can use a Splunk in a single and simple center I can say wherever the data is there we can use a Splunk as simple as that 
So okay. for creation of the dashboard, we need a basic understanding of XML. So anyhow, when we are coming to that particular portion, we are going to cover the basic of XML, like what all tags are there, and what all the different name, name nomenclatures are there. We are going to understand over there. Okay. Okay. So this is a, a brief about Splunk and. And the best part of the Splunk using the Splunk is there as compared to any of the other uh, what to say the tool is that uh, the Splunk is coming in a single package in the sense if you go with any other tool you have to use the n number of integrations like for the UI you have to do one integration for the backend you need another integration for the database you need the other integration so likewise you have to do the n number of integration but in the case of Splunk all come in a single package. So in this okay. case, you don't need to go with the number of integration. The single package, the database is there, backend part is there, UI part is there, each and everything is there in the single package. And second of all, to work on the Splunk, you don't need to know the n number of languages. Splunk uses the search processing language that is their own language for the whole uh, commands and coding point of view. For the backend point, there's a basic stanzas, single simple state for stanzas are there. So that's what the best part of Splunk is that the people from any of the domain can come and adapt and learn the particular te this technology so that particular guy don't need to be a technical guy it's not important or any coding background should be in there it's not required anybody can okay. learn and can work on it that's the best part of the Splunk so okay. next is the uh, from which all uh, tools we can pull the Splunk so it might be the computer your load network devices virtual machine internet devices sensors database so these are the different sources from which we can pull the data into the Splunk. And these are the type of data. So the data type is not a constant. You can pull any of the log files, messages, configurations, alerts, scripts, CSV files. So any of the file you can pull the data and you can do the analysis on the top of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me know wherever you have any queries or anything. We can just uh, stop and we can have a discussion on that. So let's go to the next slide. So we have the, these are the Splunk products, are they like Splunk Enterprise, Forwarder and the Splunk Cloud. So as the cloud name itself is that it should be in some of the AWS or Azure environment where we are showing the Splunk and doing everything over there, that's the Splunk Cloud. Apart from that for the Splunk Forwarder and Enterprise, we are going to understand what all these products are there, what all the components are there, what each and every product does. So we are going to understand all this in a brief. So this is a Splunk Enterprise. So this is the for the initial some couple of lectures we are going to work on the Splunk Enterprise, then eventually move to the Splunk Forwarders in the uh, toward the ending of the classes. So here is the Splunk Enterprise. So we have the indexer, we have the search head, we have the deployment servers, license master, heavy forwarder, cluster master, and search head cluster. Okay. So these are the uh, different components are there. So indexer is known as the database. Mm -hmm. So likewise we have the MySQL, MongoDB. So likewise for the Splunk, Splunk has their own database which is known as the indexer. Okay. Search it is the one where we are going is the UI part. GUI graphical user interface where we are going to write the queries and get the result out of it. So that is known as the search head. Okay. Okay. So to understand this, let's understand the other terminology. Like next is the license master. So as we know that Splunk is not open source. You have to pay the particular amount of money to use the Splunk. Okay. So next question is like on what basis we are going to pay the amount means there should be some criteria like okay for this particular thing you have to pay the amount so that particular thing is the one how much data you are storing in the indexer indexer means database so mm -hmm. each and every day we are getting 5 gb of data for example mm -hmm. every day 5 gb of data we are getting from all the n number of sources so for that you have to pay the amount so like 5 gb per day so it work on 24 hour cycle 12 to 12 so you bought the whole like okay 5 GB per day we have bought a package some XYZ dollar like 10 dollar 20 dollar you paid to the Splunk okay I'm using 5 GB of data per day so you need some of the watcher who can make sure that you should not cross that 5 GB limit right okay so for okay. that we have the license master who will make sure that okay you should not cross that limit so for that whenever you reach the limit of 4 or 4.5 GB after you, you will start continuously getting the warnings and messages that will ensure to you that okay now you should be smart enough to or you can what do you say minimize the usage or you can maybe stop some of the logs something you have to do to make sure that it should not breach the limit okay so now uh, 
can you just tell me or can you just think like what happened if the license got breached what will happen next can you just think or they, guess so they will start uh, now they will stop processing the logs okay so what, when you said that stop processing the logs you mean that it will stop storing the logs or what stop accepting the logs that means uh, it won't uh, receive the logs it will stop denying mm -hmm. uh, no it will not happen like that the data will still come it will still okay. send to the in indexer but you're not able to search that particular set of data like for okay. example okay. is you have already pushed 5 GB of data and it's crossed a limit of 7 GB so that 2 extra GB you're not able to search the data unless and okay. until the whole renewal of data will not happen after 24 hours means at 10 o'clock you have got 7G of data so you're able to search only 5G of data there's 2GB okay. is not unsearchable so you have to wait till 12 o'clock so it will renew and then again you are able to search the data but okay. for the license you have to make sure that you should not like save 5 or 6 times is the limit if you're crossing that breach each and every time in a single month you're crossing 5 times so for that you will get a warning and then the Splunk will blacklist you and stop giving the services. So again, you have to go to the Splunk and give the legitimate reason why this particular thing of thing, uh, particular breach is happening continuously. So these are the things you have to make sure in the mind when you are using the Splunk. So before that, you have to make the estimation while buying the license, like how many sources are there, how many from how many sources the data is okay. coming, what is the estimation? Okay, I will get this much data every day from this much many sources, and accordingly you have to create the database or indexer of that particular size you have to buy the license of that particular volumes those things you have to take care of at that time okay okay next is the heavy forwarder so heavy forwarder is the one uh, that will forward data from Splunk to the uh, from the source into the indexer so I can mm -hmm. show you the simple pictorial view that this is the forwarder okay this is the indexer And this is the search head. Okay. And this is the source. Okay. Okay. So from the source, the data is coming into the forwarder, and from forwarder is going to the to the indexer, and from indexer is coming to the search heads. Correct. Okay. okay. So okay. this is a forwarder act like a, what to say a middle or the passing authority from which the data will flow from search head into the uh, from the source into the indexer. Okay. So that's kind of the head. Huh? Uh, yeah, you can see it's a connector between a source and the, and the indexer. Okay, so now okay. next terms come in the deployment server. So when you have, for example, is here is the one forwarder, then deployment is not required. But if you have one, two, three, four, five, like this, n number of forwarders are there, okay? So if you okay. want to push any particular uh, configuration, or application into that particular forwarder it's not possible to go each and every forwarder and you will push the changes right so for that yeah. you need a deployment server you need a deployment servers through which all the forwarders are connected the deployment server through which all the forwarders will be connected and then you will put a configuration on the deployment server and just push it okay. so you are connecting the forwarder to the deployment server once it's connected, you will just put the things over here and push it. It will automatically go to each and every forwarder. Okay, okay. Okay, so that is the how the deployment server work. So in okay. the case of bigger environment, you need a deployment server, but in the case of small environment, you don't, don't need a deployment server. Like in the single forwarder or two or three forwarders, so you can go and make, and make the changes over here directly. But when there is thousands and thousands of forwarders are there, it's not possible. So in that case, we need a deployment server. Hmm. And for the same cases for the cluster, my cluster master is there. Everything is same, it just instead of forwarder, it become indexer where you want to okay. push some particular set of configuration toward the indexer if you say 5 or 10 indexers are there. So mm -hmm. in that case, you need a single cluster master which will act as a boss. Okay, so it will make sure that all the indexer are up working fine and from there it will push all the changes over there and you can monitor all the indexer through the cluster master. Okay, so that's okay. What is over here. Next okay. is the searcher cluster. Searcher cluster is the one which will make sure it's the same thing. Instead of indexer, now here comes the search head. So like with the five search heads are there. If mm -hmm. any of the search head goes down, so it will lead to the other search heads. So okay. that's the balance to maintain. So and mm -hmm. even if you want to push any of the changes across the search head, you need a search head cluster through that you can directly push the changes. So this okay. is how the things work in the case of search head cluster. Okay. Mm -hmm. So next comes is the universal forwarder. So we have two type of forwarders are there: heavy forwarder and Universal okay. forwarder. 
so what the basic difference is there first of all in the case of heavy forwarder and this is the UNICEF forwarder so first of all heavy forwarder has the UI UNICEF forwarder don't have the UI part okay first of all and second of all the uh, major difference between the HF and UF is there heavy forwarder and UNICEF forward is there uh, for example is you have forwarder is here so the parsing of data will happen parsing of data when I see the term parsing of data it means that remove of the unwanted data from the from uh, removal of unwanted data is known as the parsing mm -hmm. so for example is here is the one forwarder and then here is the uh, in the case of heavy forward this is the forwarder stage and this is the indexing stage where the index in, indexer where the indexing will happen Next thing mm -hmm. means the process of storing of data will happen and index the database. So in the case of heavy forwarder, the parsing will happen over here over here only in the forwarding stage only. And after that the rest of the data will be passed data will be sent over here. Okay. Parsing means removing of the unwanted data or junk data or corrupt data will be removed by the slum automatically. Apart mm -hmm. from it, if you want to explicitly remove some particular set of data, you can remove it over here in the forwarder end only. So in the indexer end only the the selected data will come which will directly going to save it over here in the indexer okay. so mm -hmm. that is the heavy forwarder in the case of USA forwarder whatever data is coming over there in this in the from the source is going to be passed directly from the forwarder and parsing will okay. happen over here in the indexing phase mm -hmm. so in the case of heavy forwarder parsing will happen in the forwarder stage in the case of universal forwarder the parsing happen in the indexing indexer. phase so that is okay. the difference between the heavy forwarder and user forwarder. Okay. okay. Next is the deployment client. So as I told in the deployment server, this is deployment server and all these are the index uh, forwarders are there. So this is deployment server and this forwarder is known as a deployment client. Okay. It's the same but the forwarder as the terminology point of view, the forwarder is called as a deployment client when it's connected to the deployment server. So that's the different products and different component of Splunks are there. So do you have any query till okay. now? Uh, so the, the deployment server which you said, right? So this is uh, kind of a, uh, will help to install the agents, Splunk agents or something like that or? Yeah, it will help to install the Splunk agents in the forwarder only. Okay. Splunk the agents when you talk about, so you mean to say any type of configuration or any of the applications, any set of oh, yeah. uh, which scenario do you, you do we use uh, uh, the deployment server? Deployment server is used when you have a very bigger environment. Like I told in the initially when we have 100 to 100 thousand forwarders are there. So in that uh -huh. case it is not possible to go to each and every uh, forwarder and do the installation of application or add-ons or any other configuration. It is not possible to go each and every 1000 login and do the same thing. It is not possible. So for that case we use the deployment server where the deployment server will be connected to all the forwarder you put the changes over here in the deployment server and that's it mm -hmm. you will just push it so automatically the changes okay. will be shared to each and every forwarder so that's the benefit of using the deployment server okay 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 mm -hmm. any other question any queries no no nothing okay so this is the same thing which just now I discussed the same thing is written over here just okay. the same thing they have discussed that's in the critical system over here so this is the basic Splunk system requirements are there like okay. on which it will be compatible like this is the Linux environment or network like these type of things are there mm -hmm. and uh, as the Splunk is not open source so initially if you install the Splunk it come with the free version which will be valid for 60 days and each mm -hmm. day you can uh, store 500 MB of data every day so that okay. is your cost so after 60 days they will either ask you to go to the free version or the enterprise version initially it was a trial version so if you go to okay. the free version you don't have to pay any amount but lot of functionality mm -hmm. will be disabled automatically if you go to the okay. enterprise version you have to pay the some amount to mm -hmm. use to continue continue using all the functionalities and working on the Splunk that you have to take care of those things okay so that's the difference between the these two part okay okay so these are the uh, ports which is used by the Splunk, like for the Splunk D it need 8089, for the Splunk web it's, it need 8000, for Splunk web app proxy it need 8065, for Splunk KVC it need 8191. So like this the different ports is there which is required by the Splunk. 
Okay. So this is a normal installation link is there which uh, I will share you or you can even go to the Splunk.com and you can just create an account over there and you can download the uh, Splunk package and you can install it's a normal installation process is there. Okay. And while installation they will ask you the username and password so that username and password you have to specifically uh, take care because while login into the Splunk they will ask you the same thing. So you have to mm -hmm. enter the same username and password. Okay. okay. So this is the same thing which we have discussed for the Splunk D. It's asking for the port number 8089. For the Splunk Web, it's asking for 8000. So 8000 okay. is the front end part and the Splunk 8089 is for the access process and indexing the incoming data. It handles all the search queries and return the results. That's what the Splunk uh, D is doing. Okay. So this is the normal directory structure is there. In the Splunk home, we have the bin etc and var. So inside bin we have the all the Python and executable files are there inside the bin folder. Inside mm -hmm. etc we have the license and all these configuration files are there inside the etc folder and inside the var we have the libraries and Splunk and indexes. So these are the files over here. So inside mm -hmm. this uh, etc we have the option of like app. So you can see app like search, launcher and custom app. So as you can see if you're using a normal Android phone or the iPhone so those have their own uh, app store like play store in for the case of android so what we do we yeah. normally go over there in the play store you can download any of the application so some of the application free of course you can directly go and download it for some application you have to pay some amount to use that particular application or even okay. if you want you can create your own android app and you can use of your own so the same is the okay. case with the splunk also splunk has their own splunk app store where you can go mm -hmm. and a lot of free apps and add-ons are there you can go and install and use it and some of the apps and add-ons you have to pay the amount to use it so you have to pay that amount like for example Splunk has a premium app like ITSI app, IT service intelligence app or the enterprise security app where you have to which you have to pay the amount and you have to use it so for the initial one week it will be free of cost and for the further if you want to use it you have to pay the minimal amount so that's what it does in the case of paid one and even okay. if you want you can create your own custom application on Splunk and uh, Splunk is just like a like a platform like for the uh, Android is a platform we make a application on top of that so likewise the Splunk is a platform where you create the application on top of that so you can create your own custom application on the business need on the okay. and next is the system so in the system whenever you install the Splunk Splunk come with the pre-configured one pre-configuration will be there so mm -hmm. that is stored inside the system folder okay, okay and inside the user is the one where you have a lot of other users options are there like for example is you and me right and we have so like we have both have a different login id credentials so those details will be there inside the user folder mm -hmm. inside this where the link folder is there and then we have the splunk and indexes so there we have the options like lot of indexes are there so you can see all this indexes configuration over there lot of log files over there internal log files are over there so those are stored inside this lib folder okay so any query till now uh, no maybe we, have, we may need to spend a lot of time but uh, yeah, yeah high... that's what once once you go through the video again and go to the ppt you will get an understanding like how things work you can get a flow i know it's okay. new for you guys yeah so this is the normal, it's just a directory structure. Whenever you open the Splunk directory, these things you will come to know. Okay, okay. Okay. So, likewise here, that's what we explained. We have the indexer, search aid, license master. So, uh, for example, is in the license master, that's what I told, we have the enterprise trial license right now. Then we have to go with the enterprise license or the free one after 60 days is over. So you have to choose any one of it. If you go with the free one, lot of functionality will disable. If you go with the, uh, what to say, enterprise one, you have to pay the minimal amount to use that one. Mm -hmm. So likewise, for example, is these two instances are there, okay, instance one, instance two, and we have given both the instance as a 5, 5 GB of data mm -hmm. we bought. But for the case of first instance, it will be 4 GB you are using, some day you are using 3 GB, some day you are using 2 GB of data per day. But in the second instance, you are using 5 out of 5 or 4.5, or even lot of days you are crossing the limit, you are going to be 6, you are going to be 6.5. So if you can see in the first scenario we are end up paying extra amount unnecessarily even though we are not using all the data. Mm. But here we are paying the amount still the it's going to cross and again we have to 
uh, increase our package or upgrade our package so that we'll start using more data so in mm -hmm. that case there is a term called the license pooling where we are merging both the license into a single one of 10 GB and now what we'll do is that now we'll make sure that we should not cross the limit in this sense we have to make sure that the addition or the submission of both the instance should not cross 10 GB so for example mm -hmm. if first one is utilizing 4 GB second one can use the 6 GB that's fine because it's not crossing the limit maybe first mm -hmm. one will use 2 GB second one will use the 8 GB that's fine both of the sum is less than 10 GB or equal to 10 GB mm -hmm. so that's the terminology known as the license pooling and that's what on the initial one this is the one is going to be obviously the head that is known as the master this is the one and the rest do these two are the slave so that's known okay. as the master and slave so that's the a uh, simple term of license pooling okay. so next is the index management so here uh, we have a lot of indexes just like uh, in a database we have a lot of directories are there right so those mm. directories over here is, is called as an index so there's a lot of pre-configured indexes are there like underscore internal we have underscore audit introspection fish bucket summary so these are the pre-configured indexes where all the internal logs are saved over there and if you want to and whenever you are storing your own data you have to specify okay in which particular index you want to store a data and if you're not specifying that one in which particular one you have to store the data the main is the one which is taken as default mm -hmm. so inside the index we have the buckets are there the bucket concept are there like the hot bucket warm bucket and cold bucket so what all the most recent data are coming to the spring is going into the hot bucket then once the data become little bit old then we'll move to the warm bucket and then, then the cold bucket so the movement okay. of data from hot bucket to warm bucket and warm bucket to cold bucket is decided on the basis of like for example is we have make the whole index of 500 MB just for instance okay. mm -hmm. 500 MB we have used mm -hmm. okay and in the hot bucket we have we have used 200 MB and rest we are using the 200 and then 100 like that mm -hmm. and we have uh, make that the uh, uh, historical data should not be more than one month so in this sense when you start pushing it into the index so it will first be the hot bucket so before moving from hot bucket to warm bucket either the hot bucket size 200 MB it will cross that limit then it will move from hot to warm else the historical uh, what to say historical uh, what to say age of the data will cross like one month if the data become older than one month then it will shift from hot to warm bucket or the size of the size of that bucket if it's cross that limit it will move from hot bucket to warm bucket so any of okay. these two functions the feature is going to fulfill it will move from one bucket to another bucket mm -hmm. so that is the pretty much concept about the uh, hot bucket and how the indexes work so today what we have covered is about the what is Splunk why are you using the Splunk what are the other rival tools are there what make the Splunk better than those tools and we have discussed about the different products of Splunk like Splunk Enterprise, Splunk Unisa Forward and Splunk Cloud. And we have discussed about each and every component of Splunk Enterprise like indexes we have, search head, deployment server, and then we have license master, then we have heavy forwarder, then cluster master, and search cluster. And same as well in the Splunk Unisa Forwarder, we have the component called as deployment client. We have discussed about that part also. And apart from it, we have discussed about the basic system requirement and we have discussed about a different type of license Splunk licensing are there like the enterprise trial version then enterprise version then the free version we have discussed about that and then we have discussed about the index the concept index what is meant by index what is pre-confident index what is the retention period and what are the concept of bucket so these things pretty much we have covered for the to this session so do you have any queries any questions on that uh, no okay so this is pretty much for today I guess this okay. is okay so uh, uh, we'll sharing the PPT with you and as well as at the same time uh, this money will show you the recording also you can go through that and maybe in the next session we can have a discussion on if you have any queries or anything and at the same time the link will be there in the PPT where you have to go and download the Splunk so this is the PPT uh, this is the link where you have to go and download the Splunk so latest version of the Splunk is 8.0.0 .0 .0. So that you have to install it in your local system so that we are going to be interacting with how the Splunk looks in the and we are interacting and we are going to work with the different tabs and different functionality over there in the Splunk. 
okay 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 so any other questions any queries anything in your mind you can ask me right now okay so um, during the uh, session or uh, training so uh, how is the lab access so do i need to install it on my own system for uh, to practice yes, myself yes 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 for the lab point of view i have the spring in my system and as well as you have to install the spring in your local system also so while going okay. to the ppt i'll be going to show you how the things work and how to write the code and the same way you have to use in your own system also because it's free and you can install in your local and even though after the class you can practice it right and apart okay. from that uh, a lot of other use cases are there and case studies are there so you're going to uh, work on that real time case studies and the use cases so that you have the interaction like how the things work in the real scenario real base real base scenario okay okay um, you know uh, what about the uh, laptop uh, capacity and all because uh, one of the module it says 12 gb of ram right so, uh, that's fine that, that that's what the splunk recommend but even though if you have the 4 gb of ram that's enough you can work on that okay. So that's okay. fine. It's just, it's just, it's just the basic with the Splunk will recommend. And even though in your market if you go, I don't think you'll get the 12 GB of RAM. 8 GB mm. is the highest normally. If you go to 12, you have to customize the whole thing. So I don't mm. think you can get the 12 GB of RAM. Maximum get 8 GB, and you can install the Splunk in the 4 GB also. It will work. That's not a problem. It's just the recommend one what they recommend it. Okay. Um, and uh, 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 you know the entire. Um, session or the training is uh, through the lab setup or uh, because I just want to know how we will work on the real case scenarios uh, right so that's what I'm telling now for that you have to install the spring in a local system so okay. there I'll be sharing you the data real time data I'll be sharing with you you are indexing mm -hmm. or you are storing the data into that particular environment then we are working on different scenarios like creation of alerts dashboards reports different type of visualizations we are going to work on that different type of data optimization we are going to work so those things we are going to work in the further class upcoming class we are going to cover all this part okay so in the Splunk there are various components like indexer um, uh, search header mm -hmm. and all so mm -hmm. do we also install all these components no 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 when you ever install the Splunk enterprise so those mm -hmm. things will come by default so whenever you are installing the Splunk Enterprise, so that's what it's showing over here like that. But in real-time like scenario, that. it won't so be like this, right? No, it will be like this because whenever you're showing the whole Splunk Enterprise, it's the whole package where all the components are coming in a single place. That's what the best part of the Splunk is there. Huh? You don't have to integrate each and every different different component like that. Single no, Splunk example, Enterprise coming the whole uh, package. Yeah. For example, if you uh, in a real -time scenario, I might need some based on my, you know, if I even in case if I have some thousand uh, servers and com uh, thousand components, not only servers, it's all components, right? If I have thousand mm -hmm. components, I need to have the setup running on multiple servers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Splunk Enterprise, right? Mm -hmm. So if some if I need some ten servers where I need to install the Splunk Enterprise, mm -hmm. how a single package can able to install a uh, no, uh, all these components in ten different servers. At a, at, at a single view, you want to say, or how it is? No, um, practically, what I'm thinking is, um, uh, if I have some <clears throat> thousand or two thousand devices in my environment, my single server may not support my single uh, SAEM platform may not support to take all the logs. For that, I need uh, multiple servers for uh, an indexer, multiple servers for uh, uh, search head. Uh, that's what that's what I'm telling you when you're going that's what I told in the initial only when you're having a small word you need a single forward a single size a single index so that's enough when you go in a bigger environment you need a multiple forwarders that's why mm -hmm. we need a deployment server when you have a bigger server we need a more than one indexer you need five indexer ten indexer so in that case mm -hmm. you need a cluster master also to manage that all indexes so likewise okay. we have three four five search heads. So for that you need a search head cluster who will manage all the search heads. so it's okay it's that was the multi clustered environment when you have very much large environment in the clustered environment in that case you need the multiple indexers than the cluster master if you are if you if there is only a single standalone server then you don't need a cluster master it's a single indexer only single such head only single forward only. So you don't need a deployment server cluster master or the such a cluster when you are going to be the n number or thousands of these type particular component then you need a watcher for each and every type of 
component who will make sure that okay all the components are working fine and the things are working pretty much good so that's why these things are coming to picture so during that uh, kind of a scenario where we need to independently install all these indexer search heads uh, no, no, that's what I'm telling you. When you're installing the enterprise, Splunk enterprise, mm -hmm. you're Splunk enterprise, so obviously all the components are there. So if you want that particular uh, instance work only as an indexer, so you're just going to store the data. You're not going to search the data on the top of that. So this thing will be okay. disabled automatically. So that you're means, that there is, yeah, there is one application. While installing, it will ask whether I need to install that as an indexer or search. No, no, or no. Whenever you install the Splunk enterprise, the whole package is going to install. It's mm -hmm. only up to you which particular package you're going to use. I only want to use the data, use it for, to store the data. That's it. So I'm going only to use that one. I'm not going to do any searching, any forwarding. For the forwarding, I am using the separate one. So it's okay, you okay. have to decide, and then it's coming everything to you. But you have to pick it up which one you want to use it. You got my point. Okay. So that means if I have ten server for my sim platform, so two so I can to install the ten Splunk enterprise. So in that mm -hmm. Splunk enterprise, you have to decide. Okay, this five will act as a as a what do you say indexer. These three act as a search okay. The rest two will act as a heavy forwarder. But for the Splunk okay. forwarder, the separate package. They have to install the separate package. Okay. 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 Fine. Fine. I got it. And uh... thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.